Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Afro Luigi, and this is Space Pirates and Zombies and Bounty Hunters. Um, this is a two top down side scroll well, side scroller, top scroller. Eh, you'll, you'll see if you haven't already. But I'm gonna be playing this next. So let's get started. Um, two center stars works, difficulty normal, bounty hunter population, default tech ability. Let's turn right again. Uh, we're down there. Let's start. Let's start over there in that corner. So let's start game. Um, one thing that's really good about this game is it preloads everything. So once we're uh, in the game, there will be no loading screens or anything. It'll all be preloaded for us. So from here on in, no more loading screens. Or I may just cut this one out. Might do that. Oh, there it goes. Uh, bounty hunters are smart. They won't pick a fight they don't think they can win. I'm just reading the tooltips down there. Colonize in space still. Space stations are very dangerous when they are hostile. Hmm. Never would have guessed. Stirring up trouble. That's a great thing to be loading. There we go. We're in. I have played this game before, so I do know what I'm doing this time. Once it works. Oh, there we go. Space is a vast and desolate frontier, covering a seemingly infinite distance. Even the speed of light is dwarfed by the unimaginable scale of our galaxy. It took nearly 250 years to bridge the void between Earth and its closest neighboring star. Mankind had mastered the folding of space-time, but relied on the use of warp gates. Massive drone ships journeyed through deep space for centuries, deploying pairs of warp gates which allowed instantaneous travel between connections. Warp gate travel had not become commonplace until the discovery of a stable element, number 126. This element contained bizarre transmutable properties, allowing it to be reconfigured into different forms of matter. This made it the most valuable and sought-after commodity in the universe. Mankind quickly became completely dependent on element 126, which the first miners named Rez. And becoming totally dependent on something is never a bad idea. Due to the increasing demand for Res, the Warpgate network became privatized. Anyone with ample funding was able to deploy new and unregistered warp gates. Like a new gold rush, convoys of miners traversed the expanding warp network looking for Res deposits. This drove them closer and closer to the galactic core, where Res deposits became richer and richer. The growing number of isolated colonies became unmanageable. As the unique ecologies of each discovered planet intermixed through trade, potential pandemics became a concern. The United Terran Alliance was formed to control interplanetary contamination. They moved to heavily restrict gate access. Military blockades began to screen all trade ships traveling between gates, attacking any unregistered ships that attempted to use them. I like For a time, the UTA was able to maintain control, but they soon crumbled under the weight of rapid expansionism and bureaucracy. When able to manage their fleets and borders, the military hierarchy collapsed. Without central leadership, the UTA fleets dissolved into a series of isolated subcells that rarely communicated or traveled beyond local space. Each military subcell now struggles to control their systems by whatever laws they see fit to implement. I like how in this game you can, um, the, well, the cutscenes like this, they hold until you hit space to continue, so it allows its commentary like this, but I'm, I don't have a lot to say right now. Despite the enforced isolation, rogues continue the gold rush while refugees amass hidden away from the UTA's eye. They survive within the vast junk fields of an abandoned Earth. There they build a massive flagship named the Clockwork. With it, they intend to travel to the galactic core in search of a legendary mother load of rares. And this is where we come in. Okay, folks, it's that time again. This this will be our seventh engine test this week. I don't want to go to bed with radiation burns again tonight, all right? Let's get those puppies fired up good and proper this time. 
Yes, well, you see, we're lucky the toilet's even flush on this brick. I managed to bootstrap the induction coil to the main core to boost output, but I don't expect it to maintain a viable reaction. Nuclear particle physics and duct tape do not mingle well. Yes. Carl, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Just turn the bloody thing on. That looks good. That was a good outcome. Damn, the magnetic stabilizer is blue. We have major breaches on deck 6 through 10. Our escort ships are gone, and we're venting atmosphere. We have crew casualties. Oh, crewmen can always be replaced. The ship damage, on the other hand. Well, I told you that piece of junk wouldn't hold back an overload. Did you honestly expect any different? Look at what I have to work with here. The blown stabilizer system will have to be replaced before we can even think of trying this again. It's a common part. I'm sure there is another one in the junk field somewhere. We still have a working hangar, so let's fire up the fabricator system and build a ship to retrieve it. Okay, this is where they show us how to do things. Oh, look at all that. And we only have one little ship to build. Okay, you fly with WASD, so let's do that. And, yeah, as you can see, our target reticle at the top right shows us where we're going with the little icon that gets bigger. What am I doing again? Nearly everything of importance is marked with the radar, allowing you to see it when it's off screen. Radar indicators will be pinned to the edge of the screen, showing you the direction and orientation of other ships. If you get confused as to what you're doing, you can see your primary objective in the ship's log, F1, the F1 key. Just about every menu you see will have a help indicator. Click the help indicator to find out useful information about what you're looking at. Cool. Whoops, try to go reverse. Return the part to the mothership. I must read that as party to the mothership. No, it's not a party. We're just flying around. Well, that should fix the stabilizer, but the overload compromised the structural integrity of the ship more than I initially thought. We can't jump with a breach like this. I've written up an extensive list of the repairs that will have to be satisfied before I conduct another test. Meanwhile, I'll be in my quarters. Let me know when you're done cleaning up your failure. Oh, you've got to be kidding. I really do hate that, man. We're going to need to replace more than just one ship if we expect to cork that hole anytime soon. That's unfortunately really easier said than done. The hull damage won it. We vented most of our res supply. We even lost all the damn liquor. We need to restock our before we can build more ships. There is a mining station in the system. Elsa, you've worked with the miners before. See if you can convince them to let us harvest in their territory. Space. And we want to go to system map. So F5. Now we're going to these guys. I've contracted the mining base. They're all drunk on industrial paint stripper, so it wasn't too hard to convince them to harvest some res. To let us harvest some res. We'll have to be very careful around here. The mining base is automated and won't think twice about slicing us in half with that mining beam. Let's siphon what we need and move on. And now they're telling us, my prosecution request: please refrain from tampering with the automated mining system. If you happen to be exposed to the vacuum space, please proceed to the nearest eye wash station and rinse thoroughly. <laughs> Yeah, that would help. And the guys, this should be interesting. That asteroid that they are drilling into is even more dense than you, Elsa. There is no way we can track it. Only a station class mining core beam can even come close. We'll have to s grab the spill off table scraps. I, I feel like such a transient. Okay, yeah, this is just saying the, uh, the clockwork our mothership is to can't clock to res on its own. So we deploy the jump beacons, which is that little thing we just spawned on. You can find res by destroying asteroids with weapon fire, fly over res to load it into the cargo hold, return to the beacon to automatically transfer res back to the mothership for processing. Okay. Keep an eye on how much cargo space your ship has. The more full the cargo bay, the slower the ship will go. Be aware that small ships can cannot carry large deposits of res. If you do not have a large enough ship, you can always break the res apart with your weapon fire. Okay. So we need to gather 20 res. This ship can hold 10, so it'll be too. Oh, we're going the wrong way. 
Green is one. Green res is worth one. Blue is worth five, and yellow is worth twenty-five. If I remember, there's also purple res you can get, but that's like massive deposits. Come on, there we go. Got one piece of res. fly back up to the beacon, well, the warp point thing. Yeah, beacon. And our res is displayed up here in this yellow bar. We've got 0 out of 100 right now. That puts us at halfway. So, 10 more to go, and we're good. Um, that's what I think. I, um, as you guys just heard, there's a woman looking for a strip club. Uh, yeah, you, there's like background chatter, which is. And that's it. We've got all the res we need. Mission objective complete. We just need to drop it off. Later on, we'll have bigger ships and we'll be able to stay around longer before we collect res. No, oh, before we are not collect, before we are done. There we go. Um, now we have enough res to build the extra ship we're going to need. Plus, I was able to officially kick ass and salvage another hangar. We should be able to support two ships now. That being the good news, here is the bad news. The explosion all but wiped out our construction database, and nobody backed up their hard drive. Genius. Um, uh, he didn't say that. Uh, luckily, I was able to recover the data for a single small fighter ship called the Dart. I recommend we build a couple. Our current ships can't even cut butter, let alone stand up against any UTA ships. Well, finally, some progress. Let's see if let's see to it that we can collect what we need to build two darts. We're not leaving until we have some ships fit for combat. Okay. Uh, how much do we need for a dart? Uh, you should read this. Uh, this is how I said to build ships, pretty much it, they're fully customized, and we just click, well, let's see, for example, let's bring up this thing, you just bring up, click the part you want to replace, a little pop-up will come up, and you select the part you want. How do we build it? Start. Yeah, let's turn on auto-rebuild so that we'll build when we have enough, oh, we have enough current res, we have enough to build two, actually. And... Turn off auto rebuild actually so we don't waste resources in case things blow up. Oops, wrong button. There we go. We now have a dirt. Now uh, these ships don't have. Oh, I should have equipped a tractor beams. Um, well, there we go. Our fleet is silly, less pathetic now. We've got what we need. Now let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> So y'all want to want to pick my stones and run off, eh? Well, you go right ahead there, Missy, but not without hearing me out first. Y'all help us kick those ETA boys in the jimmies, and me and the boys will fix up that big old ship you got floating around. What ya say? What say ya? <clears throat> I suppose we can trust these people, providing you don't have any money in your pockets. I'm not sure we really have much of a choice. We're Rex away. F we're weeks away from repairing the clockwork without their help. We have a small and capable fleet now. Why not put it to some use? I sure hope you're paying attention. There will be a quiz yeah. after. And now we can swap around, change ships by pressing the number keys. These ships really can't do much for cargo. Um, oh, to dock in the mining base. We just fly up to it. And miner's problem. They are offering us a mission. Uh, UTAs confiscated the cargo from some of the mining ships and attempt to use in this to establish a lookout post in the area. This is not good for business. We need to destroy their supplies and force them to restock elsewhere. It should not be heavily guarded. So we hit accept. And, uh, oh, well, Black Market ca Catalog is where you go to buy uh, parts, but we don't have enough res for them. And, well, we could convert goods to res, but we have six crew members, so that's not enough to do anything with. Hit space to bring up the uh, bring up the system map again. Now we're going to this uh, ringed planet. Uh, 
Um, uh, Fortune Smiles. We're located there in OTA ships here right now. They're probably robbing some other some mining pearl. These fringe worlds are unmonitored, so the faster just do what they damn well please. Let's loot the hell out of this place quickly before they come back. We need to keep an eye on what we're blasting to. Max sent us some backup, so don't be shooting at the green ships. Now, um, the tactical systems have been repaired and are coming online now. We need to fire the system up to make sure there aren't any crossed wires. This is a public service announcement. Okay, this is the uh, tactics map. Uh, so. I'm not sure how to use that. Can't quite remember how to do that, so let's just carry out our mission. We need. We're just and all our mission is destroying the crates. And I think the green ships are killing some for us as well. See, we're at seven crates to destroy. Let's see if they take out any. Six. Um, Dr. Carl um, Manford. Good, we've acquired enough data. I can start upgrading some of our ship systems. We don't have a lot of data, but we have enough to get a few critical systems up to par. We'll have to choose which upgrades we think are most important. We sh should take care of this right away is to get a leg up against our enemies. Yeah, and the, diff the little orb things on the map are data packets. I'll get some more. You get data by destroying ships, and they appear in crates like this, too. Uh, two crates to go. And there's the last crate over there. Shit, UTA ships on radar. I hope they w wouldn't come back so soon, but we're not that lucky, are we? This job's got a bit more complicated than kicking over a few boxes. We'll have to take them out. Check your damn targets, too. This place is crawling with civilian ships, and the last thing we need right now is a three-way firefight. You know, confrontation may not be a bad thing. If we destroy their ships, we can salvage most of their data and rebuild our database. We can then pick up the escape pods and force the willing to work on ship repairs. We've lost quite a few of those crewmen with the red shirts and the explosion. <laughs> Right, sure. Read this. And yeah, this is just telling us the how the indicator map. There's the hull, green is good, red is bad, of course, and everything in between. And then there's armor platings, which is these little icons on each side. You have four arm, different armor sides, and then the last, then the green icon, so circular thing, is shields. And yeah, down there, crew. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, faction. Is over there, their relations, and the target ship designs at the top. And, well, weapons things. Weapon energy is the outer bar, and then there's the other one is if there's cargo full. So, what are we, where are these enemy ships? Whoa! I want to go uh, retrieve that data packet first. Up here. Oops. I suck at this. And he's going down, he's at 40 health. Of course we're not going to get any uh, uh, blueprints out of this guy. Because we already have, oh, that's a surplus dart, we just have regular dart again. Oh wait, the surplus dart just means it's um, it is telling us the tech level. So no, we're not going to get any blueprints out of this guy. And he's almost dead, he's fleeing. Come on. There. Yeah. Up here we can just pick up the crew module by running into it. Capture crew. Hey man, please don't kill me. I was just following orders. I really don't know why I'm out here. Well, I'm not going to kill you yet. Drones are expensive and toilets are in need for scr of a scrubbing. Perhaps you can take a look at that crack in the reactor for me. Hill, you're going to eat turd sandwiches without the bread if I tell you to. You even look at me the wrong way, I'll toss your ass out an airlock. That might have been a bit harsh. As awesome as I am and 
uh, as awesome as I am in fixing your tin traps, I could really use the extra working crew rep re working repairs. We should put anyone who is willing to use. The clockwork also can hold quite a few extra goons if we need to keep manpower in reserve. We don't really need to space everyone we come across. I do agree with you somewhat. Let's not forget that these goons might be valuable if we pawn them off as workers. I'm sure there are many stations that are willing to pay for the extra manpower. I sure hope you're paying attention. And there's there just pretty much telling us you can collect, uh, um, there's escape pods or these little modules, and these guys are just, these are, these are, they're dead. They're poor guys. They're dead. And you can even desire, um, surplus crew on the ships. Um, more crew you have on a ship, the, uh, faster that repairs armor and hull. They can also fight off boardings if they're being boarded. If you pick up escape pods and you got anyone who's not going to work with you, you'll get ejected and become one of these poor guys. So let's see how many crews does my ship have? It has two crew members. I'm a I have sir it just means I have extra crew that I could if I sent this thing back to the clockwork it could drop the crew off. And goons, there's a little icon at the top left saying goons. That's the um, how many guys we have on board. Yeah. Come on, there we go. He's as good as dead. He's got one health point left. Here and find those data bursts. There we go. Yeah, you see there, this guy that just got ejected? He wasn't willing to work for me. Come on, why are you running? Oh, you're fighting my other ship. Okay, its shields are down. And there's our first hint that, um, there's our first zombie mention from the guy in the background saying, say no to cannibalism, zombies are real. Yeah, there's already hints that the zombies are out there, but we haven't encountered any. And if we fly over the beacon, any res we have will be dropped off like we saw earlier. Um, the beacon also has its own tractor beam, so if any other any resources accrued near it for it to collect or data packets, it will pick it up. So if it appear so if you fight near the beacon, uh, you're risking the beacon getting damaged and possibly destroyed. But at the same time you don't have to worry about picking up as many resources because the beacon will do a lot of the work. Almost got him. There we go. He's at point like two health or something. Yeah, I'll kick him, UTA assholes. Now we went and figured some of our own folk gone and helped them, UTA bastards. I hate to be shooting down my own boys, but Mama won't stand for it. Please go on and deal with them before they turn tail and run off. I've sent you one of them email things for your map. Y'all should maybe stop by my station before scouting off. There's some real turd you have hanging off your ships, Max can sell you some fine booty to replace that rusty boomsticks you've been fighting with. Okay, so we'll deal with that next time though. This has been Space Pirates and Zombies and, and uh, Bounty Hunters, but I will see you in the next episode.